makes the run all year. I think every opponent you've had it, you've held below their average other than maybe Maryland. So why have you guys become a good run defense? Not become, but why are you a good run defense? I mean, I think, <clears throat> you know, there's three things I've always talked about. It's rushing defense, scoring defense, turnover margin. In my opinion, that's <clears> – <throat> if you look at those three things, that's in every great defense – However far you want to go, I think those are three things that stick out. If you want to throw a fourth in there, it's third down percentage. So it's just something we talk about. Um, kids know that. They bought into it um, since we've been here. And it's, it's just a, always a talking point every week in the spring, in the summer. Um, you know, I mean, if it, at the end of the day, when you throw the ball, you still got to throw it, you still got to catch it. Ball's in the air. So. Best overall performance for the defense this year? Last week, you think? Uh, yeah, as far as actually doing things to change the outcome of the game, you talk about the takeaways. It's something that we've we've harped on for a while now. Um, you know, I thought very comparable to the Oklahoma game. We just did, we didn't have if we have three turnovers in that game, we we win the game. Uh, so I think that was the difference. So in a way, uh, very comparable. But yes, overall plays that change the game. Yeah. With the exception of maybe the touchdown. Communication wise, pretty happy with what your guys were able to do. Yeah, I mean that was, uh, you know, that, that was there was two things on the touchdown that was there was a uh, um, a bad angle on the twist up front. Um, I thought Akeem may have gotten too too thick onto the tackle, but he he didn't. He come too tight and and, and kind of lost his footing. Um, and then Sean Mahone just just a an error that he doesn't make a lot. Um, you take that away, um, we we're we're down to whatever it was, three couple field goals and the kickoff return. So um, other than that, communication was a lot better. And, that, and a lot of that was on the things, some of the things we did took a lot off of off of the players. Simplified things. Simplified things, yep. How did you finally, after six games, get across the point, go, go, go attack the ball? I, you know, I think, I think the simplification has got a lot to do with it. Um, when you play faster, you tend to, tend to have a more of a reaction to that. So I think that's one thing. Uh, and then number two, I mean, it's 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 you know we've kind of had had to mix and match some pieces um, throughout the year and some rotations and, and I think guys that um, you know you take Charles Woods for example, you know he gets his chance there it is he he makes the best of it so um, you know it's good to, good to see good for him um, but to see Sean Mahone um, you know Daryl Porter you know those guys uh, competing. For balls in the air was was good to see. And I'll ask you, ask Neil this: um, Was there anything that you saw in practice or leading up to what Woods did Saturday? Was there like this guy's coming, or or did it just happen Saturday? No, I think it goes back to to last week uh, or two weeks ago. Whenever the last press conference, you know, Charles is a transfer, and it don't matter where you where you come from. Every system is different, um, and it takes time. To, to, to get accustomed to that system. And I think it's always that anywhere from four to six game or where, you know, when it clicks, it clicks. And I think Charles is a guy that was in that in that uh, situation. And then obviously being being from Dallas, uh, a little bit of a homecoming for him. So I know he was he was juiced up for that. You may cringe, but it's some players seem to play better in games than they do in practice. I know practices lead to the games, but is he maybe one of those guys? I don't cringe. I was I was a player too. <laughs> you know, practicing is I understand practicing isn't always fun. Um, no, you know Charles practices hard. Charles practices well, um, and I, I think to, to to the question, I think is is one of those things where you you see some things throughout fall camp and and throughout the season that you know you, you see some things where you know it's coming. So I think it's a little bit of both. Just going back real quick to your first response about run defense being one of the three main keys, along with scoring defense. Why is run defense to you so much more important than a passing defense? Is it because like everything kind of starts and stems from stopping the run, and that's kind of where the passing game comes from? Yeah, I mean, I think that you you, you always you're always looking at the next down. So if I look at an, on a normal series, um, you know, just and it it varies from opponent to opponent. But if I can play second and eight to plus as a defense. I, I kind of understand what your playbook's going to be from that point. And that's somewhat, you know, just you're always thinking things that play ahead. And a lot of teams have a first down run tendency. 
try to get their drive going or try to get that series going. So, um, you know, I mean, that's obviously not 100 percent. But um, and then playing the next down after a pass, you know, you're just you're, you're playing a chess match. Um, but it just it just kind of shrinks the playbook when you're able to do that. Um, there's there's a lot more things you can do against the pass and coverage than you can do, you know, stop the run. Stop the run is block recognition, block defeat, tackling, very very basic fundamentals of the game. Um, so that's which we work really hard on. And um, so you know it, it's a, a team that it's kind of hard to control. It's clock control, it's game management, everything. The teams that run the ball are the best at those things. So if you can take that away, it uh, gives you an advantage. Speaking of stopping the run, you got maybe the best back you've seen yet coming in this week, Brees Hall. Uh, what challenges does he present? I mean, you've seen him before, but what challenges does he present that maybe other running backs just can't do? He's really patient. He he can he he holds, holds, and then he, he when he accelerates through um, the seam or the gap that he has, He's as good as anybody at, at number one, the speed of that, number two, breaking tackles, um, keeping his shoulders square, getting downhill. Um, and, and, I mean, he's normally a guy like that is, a, is, a, is strictly a power guy, but Brees is good in space. Um, but he's an extremely patient runner. Um, he makes – he makes if, if you hang on blocks, it makes it really hard on your, on your defense for him because he, he allows those guys to just – Stay on their blocks, and then he, when he finds a crease, he, he he can accelerate through it as good as anybody that I've seen. Just looking at what happened in the Baylor game, when you admitted you guys really focused on selling out to stop that run, and they obviously countered that and made you pay with the, the passing game with a quarterback like Brock Purdy. Is there you know any caution to saying, hey, we, we can't you know focus too much on the run with a guy like that? Yeah, I mean he you know, he's he's probably one of the most competitive quarterbacks that I've seen, um, and so. To where their their passing game is extremely different from what Baylor's, even the personnel to a certain extent. Um, you know, you know you have to stop Brees Hall, um, but what he does and and how he moves around and the, the intermediate passing game that they have, I mean, it, it's, it brings a whole other element to the game. So you got to, you know, you got to find a way to 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 be good against both. Um, and so hopefully over the next. You know, we got a pretty decent start on, I think. So, hopefully, over the next couple of days, we'll we'll figure that out. How unique is what Iowa State does with tight ends compared to what you you've seen the rest of the year? I think it's more unique of what their tight ends are. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't. You know, I said this last year. You know, if you, it, it, when, when you're six six and six seven, whatever they are, um, you don't really have to be very unique with what you do. You just have to be unique with where you put the ball and. Um, so they they create a huge challenge, <clears throat> you know, just their just their body presence. But the motions and the shifts and changing the picture, pre-snap to on the snap, is something that's that's really unique. It's it's very um, almost triple option esque kind of kind of numbers and angles of how they do it. So it's it it, it is unique. And you mentioned last year with these tight ends when they go three tight, it actually adds more gaps. You have to defend. Why does the field? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They create. Um, we always call it surface. You know, they they three man surface, four man surface, five man surface, and you know the guy on itself. Any guy's gonna create a gap. And so, but how they create theirs with with their length and and just their body presence. It's you know it's hard. And then they throw in a, a six three, two hundred ten pound outside receiver. Mm -hmm. so, they're, they're, so you've got a lot of big guys in that second level you got to deal with. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's tough. Just to go back to what you were talking about with the blocking and their patience in the run game. I know you want your line to penetrate and get into gaps, but when they can't, are you trying to teach them to drive back, maybe drive a blocker back and put a dent in that surface? How do you attack it? You know, when your guys do get blocked initially. Yeah, you. you I mean, you. You obviously want to do that, you know. I think that any time that you're, if you're trying to attack and react as opposed to read and react, and we do a little bit of both, just depending on the opponent. Um, the number one thing that that they have to understand is they defeat the block, then find the ball. A lot of times when you get into it, is they they try to penetrate and find the ball, and the whole time they don't realize that they're that they're getting blocked or they're getting moved, um, 
either horizontally or vertically. Um, so, you know, it's just how you teach it, but it, it, it does help against a guy that's patient, a line that's patient with their scheme. If you can make a guy make a second cut, if, per se. A first cut's important, but if you make him make a second cut, that helps. Jordan, you guys played really close to receiving the same line. Was that instructive, or was that just something that, you know, that would get you more into ripping balls away or tipping passes, and they just decided to you know, be more aggressive? You say it against TCU? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, we did. And, we, and, and, you know, I think we've got to a little bit more moving forward. Um, you know, it's hard to do that without without making the coverage where it, where it helps that. Um, but I, I do think that that helps guys, whether it's practice or in game, have a little more confidence to be aggressive. That that they can um, that they can get down there and be physical and play tighter and play closer. Um, and I think the more experience that you gain, particularly at corner, you can do that. Then the more the the less risk there is to do that. So, yeah, we did, and, and it paid off. Um, Johnston, pretty good ratio of attempts to him targets. Probably similar to Hutchinson, I would guess, right? They really focus on Very similar. What did, um, what did you see from Porter and Woods about, you know, they, they gave up some plays early, but they also hung around and made some plays, too. They were not deterred or intimidated against the guy that, that maybe could do that to you. Well, any, you know, the first thing when you look at a corner recruiting him, evaluating him is not obviously a skill set but his memory and he's got to have a short memory and and as a coach you have to have a short memory with 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 the kid because receivers like that and like the one we're about to play they're going to make some plays you're not you're not going to go 100 percent. if you do great kudos but your odds are you're not they're good i mean number one johnson's a he's a really good receiver he's going to play in the nfl um and really good receivers in this league, and and the, and the kid we're about to play is the same thing. Like they're going to make some plays. All right, is can you, can we adjust it? Can you recover? Can you forget it? And so that one play doesn't affect the next five or six. And I think when you go back to, um, you know, Texas Tech or Baylor in any game, um, I think that's – and that's sometimes, you know, with like Charles and, and, and Daryl, that's a that's a sign of, of youth, a sign of, of um, when they can't – when they let that happen. So, as a player starts to grow, um, that, that's one thing that, that, that helps them with what you're talking about. Is they got to have a short memory, and they just got to play the next play. Depth concerns in the secondary corner, especially now with some injuries? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's – you can't control it. Um, it's one of those things in a season that happens, and so we gotta we gotta have next guy up, next guy up, next guy ready, which is which is our job. So.